My name's uh, Andrew Lindsay. Um, I'm basically a freelance developer. I've uh, been working in a number of industries over the years, uh, ranging from embedded systems, instrumentation, uh, networks, e-commerce, retail, uh, but always still go on and do uh, IoT stuff. I like building sensors. Uh, we've heard earlier from people like uh, Mike and Mark about the Things Network, building uh, global Internet of Things networks for sensors. Uh, what we've found is that there's been a lot of focus on actually building these networks. So, you're people buying gateways. What we haven't seen a lot of is people building sensors. Although what we have seen in sensors is things like this. They don't look pretty. They're not reproducible. Or you've got manufacturer's dev kits. They're not ideal for building uh, mass sensors, and they're not really application-specific or usable. Um, so I've been thinking about uh, what to do, sort of go from things like breadboards to modules on Raspberry Pis to modules on Arduinos, um, and, and I've basically been playing around with a few things. In the past, uh, river-level sensors for the uh, flood network in Oxford. Uh, and this has sort of got me noticed by a couple of guys in the States. They don't build sensors, but they wanted to uh, have somebody that would work with them and build sensors and develop uh, these sort of things. So uh, it's a group called Here Lab, and they're based out of uh, Massachusetts. Um, basically, a little island called Martha's Vineyard. And what they did to me is they said, uh, why don't you come over and let's design some sensors, design a, a platform we can use. So it was basically having a look where this place was. OK, down near Boston, Massachusetts, uh, and a big island, or a little island here. So what I basically did, this might just look like a set of holiday snaps. Jumped on a plane and went over there to see the guys. What I didn't expect in April was uh, four inches of snow, which was a bit of a surprise, considering I'd been in New York a month before, and it was baking sunshine. But that's the vagaries of weather for you. So it looks like a holiday snap, but basically touring around the States, um, down to uh, Martha's Vineyard, across the ferry, and uh, meet up with the guys there. Um, and basically just sat around a table, we're drinking beer. If you ever come across this beer, Dogfish Head, 90 minute IPA, it is a very nice 9% uh, ale. <laughs> and as far as I know, you can't get it in this country. Um, we basically took a tour around the island. They were showing me um, where they wanted to put sensors in. So we were going along back roads like this, full of puddles. Um, we were visiting harbours because they were talking about um, <coughs> shellfish beds. So they wanted to put sensors in, uh, in the seawater. Um, so I'm going to stop. And we're also doing a bit of a tour around some of the um, locations for the filming of uh, Jaws. So this was one of the harbours that was, was used. Um, still more touring around the island, just basically sitting down, looking out at the sea, discussing enclosures. If we're going to build a board, how are we going to enclose it so it looks nice? Um, and then part of the tour around is where we're we going to site gateways to cover the, uh, the island. Um, this is a place called uh, Edgar Town, and because it's April, um, there wasn't a lot of people around, because most of the population of the island live on the mainland, and come here to their holiday homes uh, in the summer. So if you go there now, it'll be totally different. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to do a few pictures, and also climb on the roof of a, uh, a shop. So these were two here. It was views from the actual uh, roof of a building where they want to site a gateway. Uh, we've actually got coverage over the 
the harbour um, and the main um, ferry terminal into the island. So there's also got uh, a lot of the fisheries around the harbour there, so they wanted to put buoys in the harbour there, floating to get sea temperatures. Um, so they've got all these ideas, but it's how do we come to implement it? So we, we're looking at uh, the multi-tech um, MDOT board. It's a little, um, it's XP type form factor um, module with built-in LoRaWAN, uh, operates with the ARM embed system. Um, one of the first prototypes on the top there in a plastic tube that was used in the greenhouse just to test that we could actually do something. We started looking at uh, other things we could do with it. So we found some Arduino shields that uh, are worked with um, some professional scientific quality um, probes for pH, for dissolved oxygen, so that they could be used in the, uh, in the seawater. So what we came up with is a board that's about three inches square. We can plug in a, uh, uh, the Multitech MDOT. We can plug in a series of sensors. Um, all of these are just sort of off the shelf that we can buy. We wanted to make it easy for uh, people to build something. Uh, it's come through a few iterations. Um, so we've got external temperature probes. We can plug on um, other device, external devices if the, uh, the main hardware doesn't support it. Um, I basically aimed to have one of these built and ready to demonstrate about two weeks after coming back to the UK. Uh, and this was at a showcase in London for the IoT meetup group. So we're showing the first sort of prototypes of this module in a, a handheld form, uh, monitoring the state of a plant to go in for the agricultural use cases, um, even in a laser cut case, so we could try the enclosure options. Over the past few months, we've been refining the design um, uh, and finalizing the different use cases, uh, sitting around the table with people like Yodit, uh, and she's been firing ideas at me and saying, can you do this with it? Can you do that? There's been a few tweaks to add uh, a couple of extra features. Um, and this is basically the final version that we've got at the minute. So in this form, we can use it as a handheld device. Um, I've had it here today, testing that I can actually connect into the Things Network gateway down at the bridge rectifier. Uh, and that was successful after it was restarted. Thank you, Andrew, for arranging that. Um, the next alternative is an indoor sensor. So basically, bare bones stick in one of these uh, temperature humidity sensors uh, and a battery, and that can sit in your house somewhere, in your shed, monitoring the temperature there in a nice little enclosure that was off the shelf. Another option is we can plug in this little PIR module, and you can then do occupancy sensing in buildings, under desks. Um, uh, what's the next one? Come on. Another option is to use something called the BME280, which is a temperature, humidity, pressure module. It's a little plug-in board. Put them in. All these little plug-in modules uh, from Adafruit, so it's basically off the shelf rather than going getting um, something off eBay and then buying it the next week and finding that the manufacturer's changed, even though it's the same supplier, and finding that it doesn't work. So we've got something that can be plugged in and we know it's going to work if we buy it from a manufacturer in the UK, or if, we, sorry, if we buy it from a supplier in the UK, buy it from a supplier in the States. Um, next sort of use case on this one was the a shield from a company called Whitebox Labs, based in Switzerland. They take two of these little modules uh, that use with the Atlas scientific uh, probes. So this is the dissolved oxygen, pH, uh, conductivity, and ORP. 
So you can then use this board in applications in uh, aquaponics, in uh, fish farms, monitoring your aquariums, um, and the aqua farming as well. You can also put on an external temperature probe using the screw terminals at the bottom to then get the, uh, the water temperature. And these are actually being used, uh, the guys in the States, here lab, they have been running a series of workshops over the summer. Uh, they're exploring all the use cases and getting the community engagement with this. The first one they did in July was with this company called the Island Grown Farm Hub. Basically a massive greenhouse, and I'll go through a sort of more detail in that in a little bit. But they basically had people come around, build sensors, and apply them to the real um, application. Second one they did was uh, the people called the Polyhill Arboretum. Um, this was the first of their STEM camps. So they're actually putting sensors up in trees to monitor um, light levels right way up in the tree canopy um, and soil moisture as well around the bases. The final one that was just last week was the Edgartan Great Pond Foundation, uh, where they were doing some water quality monitoring um, to try and get an idea of are the, the fish going to survive, are the, um, the mussels, not the mussels, the oysters going to be growing correctly this year and generally monitor the, uh, the water quality. But, uh, looking back at the, um, the, fa the farm workshop, it's basically big greenhouses, a lot of uh, land, and they're growing all the food, uh, salad stuff, because they're an island, so bring stuff in, it's going to be expensive, so if they can grow a lot of the stuff there, that's going to be uh, a bonus. Um, so what they've got is all these greenhouses, and they'd like to know the temperature all over them. Place. Instead of going around and looking at individual um, temperature sensors or thermo thermometers stuck up around the, the greenhouses, they're uh, having a look at uh, using uh, sensors. So uh, they want to put in the sensors throughout the greenhouse uh, and outside as well. So what the uh, HEAR lab had done is they got a number of people they come round and they're basically going through the full sort of life cycle uh, developing sensors from basically first principles, prototyping them um, and then building up something in an enclosure and installing them on the sites as well. So they were using things like the multi-tech development board with the M dots, uh, breadboard, the sensors that way, get the data in through the gateways, program it using uh, Node-RED to feed the data into various locations. So then once they've got these out and boxed up, start to install them. So they had a range of ages from 11 to 56 um, on these, uh, this camp. And so basically they've got a number of these within the greenhouses and they can monitor the temperature and the humidity at different points. And then they've got a, a dashboard, it's just a fairly simple dashboard at the minute, where they can see the different temperatures in the different zones of the, uh, the greenhouses, so that they can get, then get an understanding of what's going on in different parts. Uh, and they're also looking at things like the soil moisture, so they can know how things need watering or if they need watering more often. Um, with all this, with uh, myself working with Here Labs, we also needed a few other partners. And been partnering with Multitech for the supply of the equipment. Also been partnering with Open Sensors and Yodit for the delivery of the data and the, uh, the displays, um, and also the guys at White Box Labs to uh, provide the uh, the shields for the. Uh, uh, water quality uh, sensors. Well, the future. We've got this, uh, the board in a particular form. It's great, build it yourself. Uh, we're going to start producing kits. Uh, we've had interest for building uh, 
more projects around the island, uh, not just the island, also the island of Australia. Um, we've had interest from there, we've had interest from China. One of the big problems with this currently is it's not geared up for mass manufacturing um, because it's all through whole components. It's ideal if you want a kit, if you want to put it into an educational establishment, get people to build them up themselves, it's great. If you want to build 500 of these or 1,000 of them, it's very expensive. We've had quotes, uh, and it's basically said, yeah, we've got to go and build it up by hand or set up a jig to hold all the headers in place and run it through soldering machines. So we need to do some redesigning. So version two is likely to be fully surface mount, probably more of the sensors built into the board itself. Uh, partnered Multitech are releasing a, a brand new um, module, actually getting some uh, samples next week, which is only available in surface mount form, so it would have to go that way anyway, but it also reduces the cost of these boards as well. So looking at not just manufacturer cost savings, but uh, overall parts cost savings as well, to uh, try and get this uh, out and used in more places. Thank you. Might have been a bit quick there. <laughs>